Hello, my name is Andy Darren from Race Technology. In today's video, I would like to introduce the Dash 4 Pro. So in previous videos, I talked about the, the Dash 2 and the Dash 2 Pro, which is this unit here. Um, and just to compare, this is the Dash 4 Pro. So there's a couple of things to notice immediately. First of all, the Dash 4 Pro is a lot smaller than the Dash 2. Um, in, in usage, typically the Dash 2 and the Dash 2 Pro are used as the main uh, dashboard in a, in a car or a motorcycle. So that typically replaces the manufacturer's um, original dashboard. In contrast, the Dash 4 Pro is typically used either as additional, additional race instrumentation, so you're keeping the original dashboard, but you want some additional race instrumentation. And it's also used on Formula cars, where there just is not room to install a Dash 2 Pro. The other big difference is, in most cases, the Dash 2 Pro is used standalone. So it's installed in the car, it's wired to the loom, displays the data, logs the data. Uh, in contrast, the Dash 4 Pro doesn't have any inputs of its own. So there's no analog inputs, there's no, well, the only input is a CAN input and a serial input. So nearly always the Dash 4 Pro is used with an external data logger, in which case that plugs onto the data logger. Um, in some cases, um, because it has its own built-in CAN receiver, it is used standalone with, a, with an ECU outputting CAN data, but most commonly it's used with a data logger. So we actually manufacture two different models of the Dash 4 Pro, um, just to show you. So this is the first one, and this is based on LCD technology, which is quite similar to the technology used in the Dash 2. So in this case, this can be seen under any lighting conditions. It's backlit at night time, and during the day when the sun hits the display, it's reflected out on a half mirror. So this can be read in very bright sunshine or in complete darkness. We do a second model, which is based on OLED technology. And this is similar to the display type used on very modern televisions and mobile phones. OLED, in contrast, each pixel is an individual LED. So they come on when the pixel is turned on. That looks fantastic when the light is uh, relatively low. So if the unit's in, in, uh, in shadow, so a car with a roof, or um, any applications where there's not direct sunshine. The issue with the OLED display is if you've got direct sunshine on the display, it washes out. Again, it's a little bit like a mobile phone. Bright sunshine can't be red. If it's in the shade, it looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, as well as the two main uh, models, um, there's also uh, a couple of options. So the first one is, for the units I've shown so far, they have straight cable. So these are designed with a data D-type on the end. They plug straight into one of our data makers. The alternative is it can be supplied with a curly cable, so, um, and these are designed for steering wheel mount. And in that case, it's also supplied with the, uh, the steering wheel mounting bracket, so it's mounted on the rear like that, and that goes on the centre of the steering wheel and moves with the steering wheel. So that's particularly popular with the Formula guys, but also some of the road gang guys like the, uh, like the unit mounted in that way. The other mounting option is with a suction mount, which is a special bracket which attaches directly to the back of the Dash 4. This is more, well, it's used in temporary applications, obviously. This is very popular with the industrial test guys where they're moving between cars on a fairly frequent basis. Uh, the final option, which I'll just mention, is the USB data programming cable. So this plugs into the USB on the computer, obviously, and then it goes to the Dash 4. And this converts both power and data, so there, there's no additional um, cables required. So that can be used for programming the dashboard directly from the PC in a very convenient way. It's not always needed, however, because the Dash 4, although it's got a serial connector, um, if it's used in combination with a data logger, you can program it via the data logger. So in that case, that plugs into a DL1, and then you can connect the DL1 to the PC with the USB cable, and you can program that route. Alternatively, you can put the configuration file for the Dash 4 actually onto the DL1 memory card, and when the DL1 is turned on, it sends the configuration automatically to the Dash 4 Pro, so it can be maintained in that way. So there's a couple of different options. So now if we uh, take a look at the software, I'm just going to go through some of the features of the Dash 4 Pro, and um, 
show you what the unit is capable of. So, in contrast to the, uh, again, in contrast to the Dash 2, the Dash 2 has three or four predefined display areas, and you can control what variables are displayed on those predefined areas. The Dash 4 is fundamentally different to that in that it's a graphics display. So we have complete freedom, we can display whatever variables we want, wherever you want them. But you can have them in a, in a few different font sizes, and we can also have other objects. So we can have graphs, bar charts, and text. So it's, it's more flexible. You can have uh, more, more data in, more, in, uh, in different locations. So if we look at the uh, configuration software, it's, uh, it's already running for us here. So at the moment, I have a blank screen. Uh, if I right-click on there, I can add, well, add a control, as it says. And there's four different standard objects. There's a special one for Speedbox, which I'll not talk about today. But uh, if we start off with the numerical display, it's probably the most common uh, control. So add one there, and we can choose which, uh, which variable we wish to display. So that could be ECU data, could be a temperature from an analog sensor via the data logger, could be a CAN variable. So there's uh, all sorts, or it could be lap timing or anything. Um, so we select a variable, and then we select what size of font. And that goes all the way from tiny, so medium's probably the, uh, the most common, uh, right up to extra large where a single line of text fills the whole screen. So extra large typically is for warnings, you know, when things go wrong, really important stuff. Um, for regular day-to-day -day use, normally you're using medium. Um, and if you're trying to squeeze as much data onto the screen as you can, then tiny is very useful. So let's, uh, let's go with medium. And then we can set up things like number of decimal places, number of leading digits, how often it's updated. So the default is 10 hertz. 10 hertz, make sure it's quite a reactive display, but maybe changing a little bit too quickly in some applications. So it can be quite useful to turn that down. 2 hertz, that means you can actually read the individual numbers as they come up. Say OK to that. And then we can move it around and position it. And we can have lots of those. So just uh, pop another one on. So yeah, we are. We can have another one there. That's a slightly smaller font. The next uh, control object, we've got some graphs. And again, we just simply pick a variable, um, the update rate, and we can control how the scaling is done on those as well. And we can add those, and again, we can change, change the size and the location of those. Next one is the bar chart. So a very typical application would be using a bar chart to look at acceleration levels. So we could have a manual scale, just for an example. So if we put minus two, so that's like a typical maximum braking uh, g-force on a race car, up to zero. Okay, and we might, maybe we want to pop that all the way across the top. So that will now show the braking g-forces in real time as a bar chart. And the final one is text. So in this case, we can either just display static text on the screen. So for example, you might want to label one of the numerical displays. You might want to put oil pressure above it so you, you know what it is. Um, the other thing which is very useful is being able to display it, um, switch the text on and off depending on the condition. So for example, we could have um, a message that says too hot, um, but then only display that if uh, oil temperature, let's say, oil temperature, that one, is above, let's say, 120 degrees C, so that's getting a bit toasty. So in that case, although the text is shown on the display, that's only actually going to display when oil temperature goes above a particular threshold. Um, we have up to five screens of standard data. So in this case, I've been messing around on screen five. You can see there's data pre-configured on screen four, three, two, and one. And you switch between those screens just using the up and down arrows. There's also two special screens. So there's one called sector. And the sector screen is displayed whenever you cross a new sector. So it obviously is used to normally display sector times, delta between the current sector time, the best sector time, all, all that kind of uh, data. And there's also similarly, there's a lap screen, which is displayed at the end of a lap. So the, if you look at the, the lap timing variables available, so that can be any combination of predictive lap times, lap counter, sector timers, best lap times, 
reference lap times. So it's very, very configurable. You can have any, uh, any lap timing statistics that you want. And ju just for reference, they're the same lap timing um, information which is available on the Dash 2 Pro. So it's exactly the same information. It's just presented in a slightly different way. So moving on from there, if we look at some of the other options, uh, as you can see down the right hand side we have a list of all the, uh, all the variables which are available to display. Um, so for example if we look at uh, some temperatures, so on to oil temperature, we can do things like set the units, so we can change it to Fahrenheit for our American colleagues, and we can also add alarms to all channels, so again if we wanted to add an alarm here we might set it to come on at, well, let's say minus 20. But more importantly, a high level of 110. And when the alarm goes off, the, the, the screen changes, so it displays the warning nice and clearly, and all the uh, LEDs flash as well, just to tell you that uh, clear indication. And when an alarm goes off, you just press the set all the menu button and that clears it. Or if you wish to permanently clear an alarm so it never shows again, you can press and hold one of the buttons. Also on the unit, we have uh, shift lights. So we've got two rows of LEDs down each side, so a total of 12 LEDs, and they're actually bicolor LEDs, so they can be green or red. So um, they can be very freely programmed for whatever you like. So in lots of applications, for racing applications, they just set up both as shift lights. Um, however, that isn't uh, the only use for them. Um, another common use is you might have one set as shift lights and the other set as real-time time slip. So there are a bar graph, a red bar graph, when you're going slower than your, far, your previous fastest lap, or green when you're going faster. Um, or they could be set up to display temperatures or pressures, or well, they're, they're freely configurable. So that's what this uh, this control screen is for. So we have standard, which is the uh, the, the, um, the RPM shift light options. Or we can set them up as more advanced shift lights, or as a performance indicator, that's for the time slip. Or we can display any other variable. Um, and uh, Moving down there, we also have, uh, I'll not describe it in detail, but we can also set up reference times for sectors. So if you have some target times that you wish to match, that's a good option. Um, and also we can set up uh, the, the menus. So th that screen allows you to set up things like how bright the screen is, how bright the LEDs are. And we also, you can set up the buttons for different functions. So by standard you've got move a screen up, move a screen down, um, start and stop logging in the menu. Um, but they can be configured in different ways to suit your particular application. It also has a very comprehensive performance monitoring section. So if this is connected to a data logger, then that allows you to use the display for quarter mile timing, acceleration timing, brake timing, and some other performance functions. So that's actually quite a popular one with uh, magazine testing. Okay, I think that's probably all I'd like to say about the Dash 4 Pro. Say so it was just a, uh, a, an introduction to the unit. I'll be doing some uh, more videos in the future about how to configure the unit in more detail. But hopefully that gave you some idea of the capabilities. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye.